Hey, it's Eric with Jaegerheim Farm. We just uh, changed the pins out of our skid steer, the bucket coupler pivot pins. Um, thought I'd video it. I tried looking something up on YouTube to see if there was something around that I could kind of get for reference, but there wasn't. So I decided I'd make a video to do it. Um, so have a look. If you have any uh, comments, please leave them below and uh, we'll see you guys at the end. So sorry about the wind. But we have, uh, I pressure washed, uh, power washed all the uh, loader off here. It was dirty, full of manure and clay and stuff, whatever we've been moving with the skid steer before. This is a C232 New Holland skid steer, or track loader, I guess you call it compact track loader. Anyway, I, uh, hopefully this wind isn't affecting the video so much. I've got, we've got some lateral play in the pins here. You can see it down there. Over. I'm not supposed to be doing that at all. And if I move it up and down. Okay, so we're back. I've got the pins pulled out. This is what they look like. They are a tapered pin. That's just grease there. These are actually just smooth and then brought down to a taper. So inside that uh, linkage here is where the tapered end goes in there. And then this is completely flat and level on this side of the linkage. Then these bolts go through, go through the pin like this, um, or actually like this, sorry, down through that hole because that feeds in that linkage all the way through. And there's a flanged nut there as well. And inside that linkage is, okay, so here's the seal, the seal that's on the outside. And there are two of these bushings in there. Now these bushings probably were okay, but there is one part that is missing from this equation. Actually, there is a also a, uh, this is a spring spacer. And inside there, you can kind of see it. There is a detent in the middle there. See, there's the far, on the far edge, uh, halfway through the hole there, you can see where the first bushing butts up against that. And then halfway back this way, you'll see there's a detent there and that's where this spring clip sits in between the two bushings kind of like that, and it prevents them from climbing up on top of one another and causing all kinds of havoc when you have to take it apart. Then on the uh, outside of the very edge is where this seal goes. Now, something important to point out, um, something I've learned, is that when you're dealing with liquid or oil, uh, you always want the lip, and I call this the lip, this piece right there, that little edge right there, the lip, you want the lip going inwards. So then the steel flat surface is pointing outward when it's liquid because what happens is the pressure, or if you want to call it a hydraulic pressure, pushes against the lip and drives it down like that and prevents the seal or prevents oil from leaking out. Now, when you have grease, it's the opposite. A semi-solid, was my wife and daughter going to feed animals. Anyway, uh, when you have a semi-solid like grease, you want, you're not so concerned with liquid seeping out. It's okay if it does a little bit actually. You want this facing the opposite way so that as you pump grease in, grease is able to purge out of the seal. So you can, it'll push and then also it will prevent contaminants from penetrating in this way. So just a tip that I learned. I don't know, most people probably know it already, but I didn't, so I'm sharing it with you guys. So again, liquid oil, you want the the open face or the, uh, the lip, the tapered lip to face inward to prevent leakage outward. When it's a semi-solid like grease, you want it facing outward to allow the grease to purge as you're pumping, pumping the uh, pin or carrier with, with grease. Okay, and I'll show you, actually, I'm, I'm really impressed, actually, with the simplicity 
of the new Holland system of pins. Um, I watched a fellow on YouTube using doing the pins in a Takuchi. It's another brand of uh, Japanese uh, skid steer. Um, they're a good brand, awesome machines. I've heard nothing but good things about them. It's just that he had to manufacture kind of a pin drift to be able to pound the pins out. And then he had solid bushings all the way through, which um, looked like it was a bit of a chore. He had to speed, he did it at high speed in the camera and pounded them out. And it looked, it looked a lot more labor intensive than what I had to do here. Basically all I had to do was, because these are tapered almost like a, uh, a tie rod end on a vehicle, is you take a large hammer, I think I had a two pound ball peen or something, and I just, you beat, you beat down on the, uh, this end where the taper feeds into, just like you would a, a tie rod end, you beat the edge of the tie rod end and what it does is it shock loads the, the taper and it pops out afterwards. Oh, this is what, hi Freya, dad's making a video for YouTube. Um, so you beat this and if you watch, if you watch this side, it, uh, it will actually jump, jump when that pin releases. I think I had to do it like four or five times on this side and I only had to do it twice on that side and it jumped and the pins popped right out. I had to tease them out using the bolt. I just fed them through and then kind of pried a bit and then pulled slowly and the pin and these, these tapered pins came out and then I was able to lift the, uh, lift it off of there. So um, I'm going to show you in a second the part I really dislike about the system. I do like the, uh, like I said, the simplicity of, you know, separated uh, or split, so splitting it into two bushings and then having a spacer in between. It makes it much easier to drift it out and the bushings are split, which is, which is nice too, because then it allows... Sorry, I got a phone call right in the middle of that last part of the video. Um, I was saying that the bushings are split down the middle, so it allows for contraction and expansion when you're driving them in or driving them out, or if the, uh, I guess if the pin kind of wears oblong or something, it can kind of compensate slightly for that. But uh, I'll show you right now what I really dislike about this system and what I think is really uh, kind of Mickey Mouse. It's these things right here. This is a, I, think it's, I don't even know what the, I think it's an inch and seven eighths maybe. I can't remember, no, I can't remember exactly what the spacing is, but what it does, and I showed it earlier in the video when I had the, the machine still together and I was kind of showing what was wrong, why, what it was doing. It's because these things had been pounded out and completely fallen out. And where these go is in between, they slip down in here, the pin goes through and then it and then it passes it passes through here passes through this washer and then passes into the main linkage and this is what stops lateral movement this this uh loader frame the coupler frame from moving from side to side in in this linkage a little washer made in china and that caused me a lot of grief to have well not a lot of grief I mean it was wasn't that hard to pound these pins out really but I mean this thing's got a thousand hours on it and this happened probably a hundred hours ago and I just haven't had time to take it apart and do it because we've got animals to feed and skid steer work to do and yeah anyway it wasn't it wasn't affecting the uh the vertical movement of the pins like there wasn't a lot of wear in the pins and bushings it was just sliding back and forth and I figured since I got it apart, I would just put all brand new ones in. Also, something they did change is that it is no longer just a straight split. Um, I guess with the straight split, you're, there's there's a part of the pin that is not supported all the time. Like there's a there there would be a, sli a slit right here where the pin is not supported. So there's a possibility that it could wear along that that open edge. So it was smarter of them, I guess, to to uh, put a wave or kind of a claw in there to ensure that the pin was supported all the way across and that that's an improvement I guess but um, yeah I'm going to drift these in these the new uh, new springs put the new seals in and then uh, yeah I got some grease to clean out of there well there's also dust caps that go on the outside there 
they aren't in this box though so yeah the dust caps aren't in the box but there's dust caps that go on the inside and then they're greased through this fitting and that just fills up almost like a wheel bearing kind of system where there's a dust cap on the end that captures completely sealed from dust because this is this is dirty all the time this is always in the material aggregate what have you and if you get sand or dirt in with grease it turns into an abrasive and it will just wear your pins out and everything else so that's their that was the way they used to uh to seal those up anyway um i will get these started and if i need to make a video to show you any little tricks or whatever on the way through we'll do that too okay so uh a little update here started drifting in the uh the bushing you can see the bushing is in and so is that little circlip or whatever that spacer you want to call it um one thing i noticed is you could see the grease the hole come on focus camera the hole for the uh, grease zerk is right there at the top and that the grease goes between the two bushings and through that spacer so what i did was i made sure that the opening for that circlip left a gap where that where the grease circ is so that when uh, the grease will flow more easily through the through the pin area so i just wanted to do that update really quick and you can see that 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 grease circ is right there grease circ is right there and the hole corresponds underneath and that circlip um just to keep it keep it well greased and well you know easier flow of grease through the through the pin here i just made sure the circlip gap was right over top of that so that the grease will flow through anyway i'll show you there's a little trick to getting that circlip in there and and uh i'll show you that on the next one so we've got we've got this side here um we're moved over um this is the circlip inner bushing is already in and pounded up against the uh the lip that's machined into this linkage so how i've been putting these in it took me a few minutes to figure it out but um i tried using a uh, plumbing pliers to compress them a little bit and try and squeeze them in just to get one side started and then kind of beat around and get them to slip in but uh, i found the best way to do it is start at an angle like that and then take a punch like get it wedged in there so it'll hold just temporarily and then take a punch like this one and just start driving it backwards into the at a, kind of at an angle till the bottom side is half touching it and then slowly come up here with the hammer and work your way around the circlip just until that until it's inside that this lip here the seal lip or the seal uh notch until it's inside there and just keep beating it around and and driving it in okay so i'm going to drive this in now hopefully you guys can see me kind of okay so last one is I kind of push it in there it's kind of held there we go got it to start kind of work its way down and you got to be careful because it will jump out of there it is a spring in fact so We'll jump see it's gonna twist on there. Of course it's harder than heck to see that. Okay. Hopefully I didn't block you guys with my hat. Um, so, basically that's how it went. Um, okay, now I'm just gonna drive this around and make sure the gap, make sure the gap for the grease circ is not blocked. I'll do that by, of course I didn't leave myself much room here. Hopefully this is fairly light. Okay, so I 
It's about dead middle. Okay, now, drive the last bushing in. Okay, so we're gonna put this seal in, of course. This is a grease linkage. It's a grease linkage, not an oil linkage. So the lip, the uh, seal lip will be facing outward to allow the grease to purge out. So what we do is we just set it in and it's only finger tight, like it just slips right in. And then it's held in place by the washer that goes in there as well. So that's kind of what it looks like right there. Uh, you can see the spacer and I always try to um, have a 90, 90 degree difference between uh, where these line up, where the jaws on this bushing line up. You notice that they don't correspond on the other side. They're actually up higher on, on the inside there. But anyway, um, yeah, so that there's, a, you know, there's not a constant, a constant line between those two, between the two bushings so that this distributes the wear a little better. That's just in my head, but okay. And I also called the uh, New Holland dealership. I thought I felt anti-seize or wiped anti-seize out of the tapered union there, but they say not, it's supposed to go in dry. This, uh, this part of the, this part of the uh, pin goes in that tapered opening and they say it goes in dry so I guess it is like a ball joint completely completely dry so it latches in there a little better I will have to wipe that out and uh, give it a shot of brake cleaner to get rid of all that and he sees this side I held off doing this side until I until I talked to them so anyway uh, I will get the new pins I've got new pins in a box but on the other side of the machine I will grease them up and then I will lift this into place and slide the pins in and then run the bolt through anyway We'll pick it up when I get there. Okay, so we've got the pin greased. I did not grease the taper uh, because it's supposed to be dry, according to the dealer. There's our new grade, I'm assuming it's grade 8 bolt. There's our old ones. They had a little bit of rust around the collar. Probably would have been still good, but hey, that's the way I roll. Anyway, I'm going to uh, put the pin or the bolt through this and kind of feather it into the first part of the linkage. And then I've got to do a delicate dance to get that washer in between the two linkages there. Anyway, I will uh, show you how that all went once we're done. There's our seal on this side, ready to go. All the bushings are in. Okay, so tapered pin is pushed in there. You see it there. It's been pushed in. There's our 10 cent washer that costs $5 in Canada here. And I will now slide our bolt through the pin, out the back end. That's what it looks like when it's together. That bolt, that, that sits there. There's the other end. I'm probably gonna try and put some blue Loctite on that to keep it from coming loose. And the flange nuts are in here. There they are, beautiful things. There's our other PRC washer, aka People's Republic of China. Anyway, that's uh, never a fan of that stuff. I'm a fan of how these pins go together. I mean, total, if I hadn't been videoing, it probably would have taken two hours. I could have had this done, but I mean, now I know what I'm doing as well, so it might even be less, but um, all this grief because of that little washer in there. And then there's one that corresponds and goes in there. Anyway, I will get a video of it when it's all done. So we're here again. I was able to get that first washer in, of course. But this second one, there does not seem to be enough gap there. Now, the parts diagrams all say they call for two washers, one on either side to split the split the difference in the gap but I don't know if that's all the time maybe that's a maximum of two maybe maybe you could do one because it, it doesn't look like there's a whole bunch of gap there for lateral movement but what I'm going to do is I've, I've been trying to phone our New Holland dealership here in in uh, my hometown and they're of course busy it's right in the middle of planting season we're uh 
yeah, they're just flat out. So I've been, I phoned a couple times trying to get answers. They're, everybody who has knowledge of this is uh, busy. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is go to, uh, is drive in there. It's about, I don't know, 15 miles away, about 20 kilometers away. Uh, I'm gonna go drive in from the farm here and uh, go have a look at one of the new ones on the lot and see if they have this system. I know that they have a, I know that they have one of these uh, that they use around the the shop there. That's their that's their yard machine at the New Holland dealership. I think it's a 232 or a 238. I think. Either way, I'm sure it's going to be the same. I'll have a look at their unit and see. I'm sure they haven't had the problem with pin wear because really that thing probably just clears snow and and does uh, some minor minor gravel backblading and stuff like that so I'll have a look at theirs and see when I get there I'll, I'll video it and let you guys know what I come up with and uh, probably go in and talk to the parts guys and the service guys and see if I don't get any answers from looking at the machine I might just pop my head in there and talk to them anyway talk to you guys in a bit so I am just heading into town and I remembered that our water utility uses the same machine that I do so I am going to pop up onto their trailer uh, and have a look at their machine and see if they uh, if it has the two shims or just one. I can't really tell if there's any shims in there or a shimming washer. Looks like there's a big gap there though on this side. So anyway, we'll have a look at. Didn't really get the answers I wanted, so onward. So, I'm here at the New Holland dealership. This is a brand new 230. That's a brand new 232, just like mine. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I think there are two, or maybe just one washers in there. Maybe two, two shims and none on this side. And then I go over to the 232, which is exactly like mine. And I see one. However, those look a lot thinner than mine. The ones I got are really thick. So I wonder if there's different size. I called my buddy at the machine shop uh, here in town. See, that one's got none on that side and none on that side. So, yeah. Sorry about the wind. I called my buddy at the machine shop and he said uh, he's got some machine washers there that are different thicknesses. And of course, I forgot one of the washers at home. Or I forgot the yeah to bring a sample washer in so I could get a one that's a little thinner. But anyway, I'm gonna run inside here. They're only five bucks. I'll buy one, take it over to him, size it up, and then return it for uh, return it for a refund because I just need to use it for sizing anyway. All right, I'll take you guys along for the ride. They were nice enough to give me the measurements of that washer. So now I'm off to the machine shop to get one that's maybe. 100 thou thick or a little bit less maybe we'll see um also i picked up some new bucket cylinder pins those probably are okay but i'll hang on to them um i might have a look at them and see if they're okay i might return these afterwards but we'll we'll do a we'll do a perusal of that when we get when we get there anyway i'm gonna go pick up these uh these um uh, one washer anyway for my for my buddy at the machine shop okay so we're back uh of course i forgot to bring that washer with me for sizing but they did have the dimensions at the new holland dealer and i went to the machine shop and picked this one up it is uh, 80 thousandths thick and that one down there is 120 thousandths thick so this is a little bit better than half the size of that one so hopefully this one will slip into that gap and we won't have to do any further. Uh, what I've discovered through this whole process is that the gaps between the booms, which would be, uh, that would be the boom, that vertical arm that's coming there, uh, that one there on this side corresponding. This, uh, the gaps between the boom and the uh, coupler, this is called the coupler frame that goes on the quick attach to the whatever implement you're using. Uh, there's a bale fork for it over there. That would be the implement and it couples to this. 
with pins. Uh, the linkages, the gaps between the linkages are, they vary. They're not the same for every machine. Um, obviously there's going to be some variations in the manufacturing process. Uh, when they build these things, they're not, you know, zero spot on. Um, there's going to be some, some manufacturing uh, variances. So that's what these bushings do. These are essentially a washer, but they act as a bushing to fill the gap between those two, between those two there. So anyway, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I thought they were all, all the same. Every, every one of them required two of these washers, but apparently not. So uh, some only require one one of these washers to fill that gap, and there's their tolerances are, are close enough that they don't have to worry about that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put the second washer in just to ease my mind, so that because there there is a seal in there, and I don't want it rubbing on anything. But probably wouldn't. But I'm, I'm neurotic that way. Just ask my wife. Anyway, uh, we will put this in, and then I will show you how it went. Okay. So there's our new gap shim there's the other gap shim it was a little tight went in but those will those will be the first thing to wear down i drove those pins home with a little punch on the edge same thing there pins are in tight like factory um i was going to change i was going to change these out but i mean it's hard for me not to move on there's very little play in them I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna leave them. Uh, I was gonna change these pins out here, but I mean, machine's only got a thousand hours on it, and I was getting a little bit, a little bit overkill. So anyway, uh, these pins are driven back home, and now I will put this bolt. Mine's the grass. This bolt will come through that end slide all the way through and then get uh, some, you can't see the label, that's blue Loctite or blue anti, uh, well, blue Loctite we call it. That's just the brand name. Um, and then it's a, a like a locking compound. Um, put that on there because uh, that is something that I was advised by the dealership that these bolts do come loose. Um, the nuts on the end do come loose and that can create a little bit of havoc. Um, like I said, it's a full, another flaw in the system. Um, and I did check mine and they were loose before I changed these pins out. So anyway, I'm gonna put some blue Loctite. Hopefully that alleviates some of that, but I will uh, torque them down to spec. And then of course there is dust caps that go over top of that. And then you fill these with grease. Well, you fill them with grease before you put the dust cap on and then that should, uh, it should put us in pretty good shape. Then I can go to work. I got a job lined up. Guy's waiting for me to clear some brush out of his way so he can get his planting operation going on another piece of his property. So anyway, we'll show you what it looks like when it's completely finished. Okay, so dust caps are on. It's been greased up. I filled it up with uh, grease with the grease gun inside initially just used the the hose the tip of the hose and stuck it in there and kind of filled it up filled it up first and then I'll pump some grease into the top of those grease circs and we are good to go brand new pins and brand new gap bushings anyway made this video because uh, I was looking for a video on how to do this and there wasn't any so I thought I'd give it a shot yeah, so that's why I changed the uh, pins on a C232 quick attach coupler. Basically the bucket pivot. Anyway, we will see you guys in future videos. If you like this one, please don't be afraid to subscribe. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Make sure you leave a comment. Talk to you soon.